this is. Wow. What, what a week. What a week. Politics. Politics. Good day, good morning, hello, and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Politrix with Botsan Mutimuamimuilua. Recently, a certain political party apparently humbled themselves as they seem to seek approval from a notable royal family. In a way, we get that. When we talk politics, we always consult with someone whose opinion is quite revered. So with this week's edition of Politrix, please welcome our somewhat princely monitor of political movement, Botsang Dimuame Muilwa. Botsang, welcome back. Uh, thanks, thanks, Brother First. Good morning to you, the viewers, and the production team. Uh, shout out to Bra Terry Tselani, joined us last week, and he called it when he said he didn't think the IEC would win in court and that maybe they were possibly overreaching regarding uh, uh, former President Jacob Zuma being on the ballot for uh, the MK party. Yeah, the uh, MK party. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, no, shout out to him. And he, he made us look clever and smarter. Uh, it was it was first yet on this platform. But this is what I always say about government consultation. Sure. Use experts, listen to experts. Sure. And let me have listened to arguments in court, I think, our show last week set the tone for Dalimpo, who can go and argue the case. Mm. I'm, I'm very much interested in reading the report. Sure. So you can go into the details of mm. how did they arrive at that. But I'm more convinced what Tate uh, uh, Tere has put you know, on the table. So it's overreaching. You cannot go and make proclamations on matters that uh, uh, you are not mandated to do. Sure. I think that's a common sense. It has mm. nothing to do with which lawyer was better than the other one. But it's common sense. Now, let's, for argument's sake, say JZ goes to Parliament. Mm -hmm. What of his presidential benefits? Because obviously he gets a, a nice, decent package because he's a former president. He's a former president. Yes. Does he forfeit it the minute he goes into Parliament to earn the penis that they earn? compared to the presidential uh, package? Well, uh, uh, Fresh, there's two, two ways on this. It yeah. depends why does uh, uh, a former president, Jacob Zuma, want to go to parliament today. Mm -hmm. The reason for him to want to go there, mm. it, will be, it will be much more important. I was listening to the spokesperson of MK Party during the course of the week saying uh, that uh, Zuma is so much committed to good cause. He was talking like a typical politician sure. that he is even prepared to forfeit and sacrifice his presidential packs mm. for being a bench, you know, a, a, backbencher. a, a backbencher in parliament. Sure. But let me tell you, there are two folds. You see, we don't know yet if President Zuma will go to parliament. Mm. What has happened with the IC is to say he must stay on the ballot, he can be the face of MK party. Mm. To go to parliament, it will be determined, and this is again my view, to be determined by the National Assembly mm. when they, they sign in their members, if they meet the requirements. So the Secretary of Parliament will, will, will step in at a time with the legal advisors. That's sure. one element. The second element is, I said before, and I maintain, President Zuma is doing this to deal with the ANC. Okay, so he's just being a thorn in he's the side. He's just being a thorn in any of his captured and busy because, yes. what, look, uh, 900,000 or maybe 1.1 million at the moment, vis a vis over 2 million mm. with other benefits like bodyguards, vehicles, and you know, and things like that. And and if somebody says to me, it is not about money, it's about the principle mm. of being there, being a backbencher. Sure. And, and if he becomes a member of parliament, the, 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 the National Assembly may then indeed vote for him to be in power. But this argument, I don't think it will hold water sure. to say he didn't complete his term. And therefore, uh, remember our constitution prescribes that you can only see two terms and there must be a cooling of yeah, two full terms. Two full terms, yeah, yeah. but fresh. Uh, it does. He didn't finish his term. Well, uh, let's leave that one for the leader. Uh, but there's another important thing that I, I went to read la, uh, uh, last night and yeah. I applied my mind thoroughly while we are awaiting the electoral court decision. Mm. I went to inform myself what is a remission, sure. and I went to look at judicial definition of remission. Well, remission of sentence. Of sentence, yes. yes. And, and number one, it's a proclamation of the act by the executive authority. Mm. So it, it simply reads that a remission is when the head of state or the president applies his power as prescribed by the act to, to reduce, that's the weight 
integrity, mm. to reduce the sentence, and so which naturally automatically overrules mm. the decision of the court. So, so having have read that, I think Dalim we had a case. I sure. think, despite the section forty-seven that Dr. Tetelan explained, mm. I think President Zuma and Dalim Povu has the case. The President of the Republic has empowered by the act of mm. parliament mm. to use these powers sure. to reduce the sentence that was given. Mm. So it was not a parole. It was a reduced sentence. And for that, he was not sentenced to prison for 15 months. So he does qualify to be a member of parliament and back to the national assembly. He's a sure. thorn. Mm. I, I personally, look, I've said, I personally do not think we should lose it once. He may sit there to go and backbench and, and talk and give direct guidance, but I don't think he wants to be actively uh, uh, participating in politics. I No, I don't think so. I was thinking as well, just sit at the back and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, it's a wait and see. Very interesting developments, very interesting situation, proper for democracy. But a similar situation happened, remember, with the uh, former president, uh, Kalma Mutwante. Yes, yes. Remember, yes. because he came back as a deputy president, exactly. we were told, I think what the way he w- uh, worked it out was, I will keep my perks of a former president yeah. and I will forfeit my deputy president salary package at the time. So there obviously is a way around it then. And I've said, in addition to what you are saying, yeah. I've said that I've applied my mind and I've said, but we have had people who were premiers. Sure. And one of them is uh, 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 Mr. Subramanian from mm-hmm. the Northwest, who are backbenchers now. Mm-hmm. We have people who were ministers. David Marshall is one of them, now deputy minister. The other one is Medipo Peters, mm-hmm. is now a deputy minister. Mm-hmm. It has happened. You have mentioned Kalima Mutlante. I've mentioned a premier. So, so there is a way around this. And it has nothing to do with favors or Jacob Zuma. Mm-hmm. What? If, and I was thinking, what if Nsholozi goes to government and say, I'm going to be an MP, but don't pay me because I'm already having a benefit? Exactly. Well, what if you, yeah. which law will stop him from doing that? Absolutely. To say, no, I'll serve as, an, um, as, as a member of parliament. Mm. Parliament budget is constrained. We hear it from mm. the spokesperson of parliament. Says, then the one million that MPs are getting, mm. I want to contribute to the administration of parliament or for development of mm. researchers mm. in parliament. Which normal counter will refuse that? To say, I'll do the work, but I don't want the income. Absolutely. The people have voted me Mm. to be in this position. I don't rule that out as well. But one thing I appreciate about former President Zuma is I think unlike anyone else in this country has stretched the Constitution to where nobody thought anyone would or could he, he has fresh and, and, and in various aspects and platforms. Yes. You know, not only in criminal matters, not yes. only in civil matters, in almost everything. Mm. Almost everything that shows he touches gets stretched. Yeah. He has put us that people will even say, this man, uh, uh, we are telling mm. He's not respecting the constitution. He's not. But for me, you know, let flip the coin and say, who said laws are stuck in it? Sure. You know, said mm-hmm. oh, 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 he questioned, he brought things up, mm-hmm. and and I saw in the last two weeks, all analysts became lawyers, all lawyers became experts, and and and, and even radio commentators were experts in mm-hmm. legal matters. Mm-hmm. And he keeps a humble, you know, personality that we all know. But indeed, he has stretched the laws of this country, and also the the administrative processes sure. of the country. Yes, to an extent that uh, 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 we never imagined. We, mm. we just thought people must occupy comfortable chairs in positions and they live after. Mm. And we should be proud that we have actually Ntate uh, Watsuinya, uh, not Mwana, but Ntate Zuma Watsuinya. He's very troublesome. Sure. But it's a wake-up call for us. But surely with this victory in court, not only is the MK emboldened, but... ANC is probably on the back foot and the numbers the ANC are probably looking forward to in the election might not be realized yeah surely it 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 it, it has you know boarded MK very well because polling are showing ANC at about 41 percent right yes now. yes I saw that yeah uh, look I still put them a little bit above 43 yeah. but but with this veto South Africans are a very emotional nation mm. with these victories of MK they still want to go remember mm. the 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 one for the uh, the ownership of the logo and the yeah, patent rights but uh, uh, as we have said and I've I've seen many analysts have said it 
the ANC should have not focused on that. They, mm. they bolstered and they boosted free marketing. Free, free marketing, marketing, big mm. time. And now, and now MK, it's, it's, it's on the ground running. Let's say, for, let's go with your 43%. Let's go with your 43%. Who would be the likely coalition bedfellow then? Of, of who? F for the ANC. Look, for the ANC... To get them past 50%. There, there's two points. I, 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 I primarily think the ANC will go to bed with the DA. Mm. Uh, uh, it, it, it will make much more political sense for them and as the two parties. Sure. And, and, and I'm, I'm just being... I don't say it's the correct one. I'm just being... Looking at their policies, and they are both running the country now mm. uh, as the two leading parties. You understand? Uh, and, and the DA will have already said that they will go to bed with the ANC of Ramaphosa. Sure. But, but then there's another dynamic that we spoke about where the EFF stands there and says, ANC of Paul Mashatile, if you remove President Ramaphosa, you see now, now Julius is interfering into the affairs of the, of the other party. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the chances of <coughs> of uh, Dr. Ramaphosa not, not being there? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Francis is joking me. <laughs> yeah, so I think the DA is more likely. So, But I would not rule out parties like the IFP. May I give you another scenario? <coughs> okay. Like I said, let's give them the 43% that you say is more likely than the 41% yeah. that they're currently polling at. What are the chances that an MK, a DA, an EFF, and an IFP could say, let's all get ourselves to 50? Uh, we, we, we have seen the moon short pegged mm. has, has literally collapsed sure. before it even took up. Mm. There is a much more likely a chance that the MK, the EFF, and the leftists, the so-called leftists, sure. The PAC mm. and and others that are contesting elections, there's much more a chance that they've they've been collaborating, they've been engaging, they've been talking. Actually, those polls that you are referring to are saying, if you look at EFF and MK and other small parties of the so-called Black, the UDMs, mm. and they can even team up and go to 51 percent. I doubt it. Mm. Uh, it will only happen if if the EFF remains at 13 and up and MK comes with 15 and up. Mm -hmm. Then they've got a bigger margin of almost 30. Sure. Uh, uh, but if the combination of MK and EFF does not go to something above 30%, mm -hmm. their chances are very slim because the, the IFP, for example, will not go to bed with them. The IFP will rather go with the ANC or with, 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 with the GP. Sure. Uh, chances are very slim. Look, I, I'm convinced personally that the ANC and the DA will still rule this country. We'll wake up come June, July 2024, mm -hmm. and we'll sit there. It will still be the same thing. With reduced margins, sure. there will be much more numbers, bigger, unless the MK brings a miracle. And, and for me, it will not surprise me if Umkonto is a party. Mm. becomes the official opposition on number three. If they overtake the, the EFF, mm. it will not surprise me. Sure. Uh, uh, but it, it's a number game. It's going to depend on the numbers. Uh, but we are indeed definitely going for a multi-party uh, national government. Speaking of the, the, the MK party, Bongin Kosi, Kanyile, Khan, Tribane, Tabelo Maisha, and Gazuzu and Tuli are being strategically redeployed. redeployed yeah. What does that mean in simple English? Well, I would not know. Strategically redeployed. Well, they've been removed from the positions that they were occupying. The candidate list. Uh, candidate, the first are removed from the candidate list. So okay. for me, being removed from the candidate list is not a redeployment. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, not even a dismissal. It's a demotion. Sure. But, but the party says they are going to be used at other strategies to can make the organization good on the ground. Mm. Look, I think it's a PR document, a, a process fresh. And for the MK party to include other people mm. uh, uh, is to also, you know, cover uh, uh, the Bungin Kosi because we know the troubles that he has put the party into, uh, uh, having a loose tongue, being reckless with weights and things like that. So they're trying to put corrective measures into place mm. in order not to do more damage. So it's a damage control process. Sure. So to put other candidates in there, <clears throat> they may be 
deploying them to their national or regional offices to work in the organization. But we must also remember that MK had long said uh, their leaders, their current leadership, the national convener, national organizer and all that, they will not go to parliament. Mm. So it may be that strategy of saying they're going to sit down and build organization and prep for 2029 sure. and local elections. Mm. So I think it's part of their strategy, but I think it's a damage control process, uh, particularly with Boningosi. And, and, and they were very smart to do it when people are still happy mm. about the outcome of the case this week. Exactly. And and so, you know, we're still worried about the reckless statement, including, including we're still ready, uh. including him who's having, you know, facing criminal charges in court uh, for inciting violence and all that. He is not included in, in the list of the people that are being redeployed, mm. but very nice, very sweet, very good move from them. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's bring it down to um, municipal level. What is Corruption Watch saying <clears throat> regarding corruption within municipalities? Uh, that, that's not good news, Fresh. And I don't know what is the working relationship between Corruption Watch. Do they just watch and, and, and expose? Or do they work closely with government like the AG to assist them? Mm. But the Corruption Watch report has come out now because you know that we just commenced a new government financial year, 1st of April. Mm. And it's, it's shocking and, and it's actually disturbing that the three major metros mm. of this country, the city of uh, Cape Town, the city of Tswane, and the city of Jobek, mm. their percentage of reported corruption cases to Corruption Watch, mm. the three of them combined, it's 71%, Fresh. 71% of municipal corruption wow. only happens in these three metros. So, all other metros, mm. they share uh, the other the other twenty nine percent, and that's very horrific. And I was thinking, uh, in Cape Town, we know is a, is, a, is is the Democratic Alliance, the clean, the supposedly clean Democratic Alliance, and they are they are actually number two after after Jobek, mm. and and then again in Swali Democratic Alliance, and we are talking about corruption watch records of the past financial year, but even if you look at their statistics, it's actually the last three financial years, these three cities have been chopping up. Yeah. So so it's very disturbing. In Jobek, it's going to be finger-pointing because there is no actual party that is governing Gauteng. But there's also another municipality in the Free State and another one in the Northwest, and talking about the Northwest, Another disturbing part with the Malkosana municipality uh, chief financial officer. Mm. I mean, it's very disturbing, fresh, that this lady, and I'm not saying she's guilty of any corruption, the chief financial officer of that municipality is out on bail mm. of almost 50 grains. And she still goes to work and commits apparent, apparently or allegedly other acts of corruption amounting to millions mm. using companies that are not existing, paying for services that are not rendered. Mm. I mean, it's on bail. If you are on bail, there's already a good ground for the employer sure. to place you on a, a, a special leave. Yeah. You understand? There's a good ground. You are not dismissed. You are not guilty. But you are facing criminal charges for defrauding the municipality. That municipality still allows you to can call short and sign checks and pay bills. How did we arrive at that? Mm. I, I don't think we are taking ourselves serious. And I don't think the municipal managers, including the MECs mm. of local government, uh, uh, I don't think they're doing a proper oversight of, of these municipalities because that lady procedurally, she was supposed to have been placed on special leave while facing a criminal charges. Now she goes and she commits another, you know, act of corruption and fraud. But it's said what is happening with these municipalities. I think the government after these elections, they must empower the provinces to zoom more into mm. money. Municipalities are the heartbeat of, of, of you know, a, a, a service delivery. And that's where we should be having experts. That's where we should be having, you know, municipal managers and officials who are caring about the well-being. Of, of of the people and they're not doing that sure. and that's the challenge we are facing but yeah DA uh, uh, DA twice and ANC with their coalition in Jobek and, and you know yeah guys DA they lead Swadin they lead Cape Town they've been leading Cape Town forever and those two municipalities are on the top three most corrupt municipalities in, in the country I want to see how DA is going to see in, in, in Jobek I want to see uh, uh, Dada Morero blaming uh, can you could uh, can you could uh, blame me, uh, the mayor who they just bought a, 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 a ten cars for him and they they increase his security. You know how much they're spending for the mayor of Jobek? Yeah. 
Kaira per per month. They're spending almost 14 million on him per month. Yeah. They've increased security don't they to the money, all the guards. Don't they take the money to send him back to school? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see what boy Mama Bolo said? You don't need education to get occupy a political position. You don't need education, but education opens the way you think. It opens up your pers- how you perceive things and how you how you work, how it, you reason even. Exactly, but you know, one 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 of of uh, uh, media personnel that I respect very well in in his show yeah. said something last week that. You will see how the last month of the financial year, mm. government officials loot because it's the time where you loot and you spend money. Oh, yes. The money that you didn't use. Yeah, all of a sudden, Botsang is making banners. Yes, for, for and, and exactly. It's at the year end. Because you didn't spend the money that was allocated to render yeah. service. We are sitting with the people of Jobek not having water. Sure. The taps are drying up. But there's water on the streets of Jobek. Pipes are broken. There's no water on the taps coming to the house. Mm. And suddenly, Botsang is supplying taps to water. So when there's no water, suddenly there's a tender to supply taps. I don't know what's going to come out of those taps. But that's a challenge we are faced with. And uh, because you can't make this uh, stuff up, after that, then there's like an official tap opening. <laughs> you have spent a bar. I never thought in my lifetime I would see a tap opening. Yeah, of, of money. No, there was literally a tap opening. President Ramaphosa was opening a tap. I think it was in the Eastern Cape. I was like, why is a tap opening a thing? Oh, oh, okay, okay. But man, look, money has to be spent. People have to spend government money on on things, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Thirty years of democracy. What are your reflections? Fresh. Uh, yeah, it's been thirty years, and 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 look. I, I looked at political parties, you know, towards the elections. We are yeah. sitting with, what, uh, 51 political parties on the ballot paper. Mm. Uh, 15 independent candidates. I expected more. Right. Uh, but most of them, the challenges were, were not the 50,000 signatures. Most of them, it was the financial challenge, the registration. Mm. But 15, so we are talking about 51 plus 15, a total of 66 where we are supposed to put access. And, and, and there are some people that I'm not counting who are independent candidates mm. at, at, at provincial level, not at national level as well. But uh, I, I think, look, we, we have done well in stabilizing the country, but I don't think our political office bearers, like MPs, mm. I don't think we have done well to equip them and groom them, to prepare them to can run an office. Sure. If we still have a member of parliament, and, and I'm, I'm not taking anything from, from what was his name, Boy Mama, is it Boy Mama, the, the, the guy that the AIDS is removing from parliament, the metric guy? Mm. I'm not taking anything from him, but he's a public figure. If we still have MPs who stands up, you are being asked to produce your certificate or your diploma, and, and you, you, you don't even answer to that. You go and you defend to say, but I don't need a certificate to get me in Parliament. Mm. You can see our thinking capacity. Sure. It's not properly aligned. And, and often education fixes some of those anomalies. A- exactly. Basic. Even basic education. Mm. I mean, I was, I was listening to, to the interviews during this past week mm. of the commissioners like Commissioner Malema, for example, they are interviewing judges. The judge of the Electoral Court, by the way, Mr. Adams, who was also presiding over this, mm. he has been acting judge of the Electoral Court. He is one of the candidates. And, and imagine fresh, a me and you with our matrix only, just because we are MPs, then we are referred to as commissioners. Then we must interview judges. Mm. Some of them have been sitting in those positions and, uh, uh, for over 20, 30 years. Sure. How on earth, even if you can prepare my questions, how am I going to engage with, let's say, Dalim Poof, who applies to can be a judge, mm. and I must interview him with my metric? I mean, guys, that's where our democracy is misaligned. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we, we must professionalize uh, uh, the legislatures, sure. not just from political parties. Why don't we make it a, a constitutional requirement that a certain qualification is required to can, up, to can be on a certain position, even if it's political position. Yeah. Uh, we will do better if we have politicians who are qualified for those fields, sure. even if it's at basic or entry level. We will do much better as a nation. Uh, 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 I've, seen, I've seen political parties, for example, using Contra Lesa, the, the Congress of Traditional Leaders. Mm. Have you noticed you see more about Contra Lesa when it's election time? After that, they disappear. And the former controller a leader for many years, and that particular Olomisa, mm. uh, who was the leader of controller for many years, is now a deputy minister in, in the cabinet. Mm. So he has forgotten about traditional leaders. Now, this man has been a traditional leader for over 30 years. Mm. 
representing traditional leaders in parliament. You go and you make a minister of deputy minister of water affairs, non-related issues when his background and expertise are on traditional affairs. Mm. So we have a misaligned way of deploying people as well. But I've seen the ANC has asked people to at least have metric to be MPs. I would have I would raise the bar. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. Yes. Yeah. Raise the and take your money and take your MPs that people have voted for. Mm. You balance democracy. You see so. you say this community they want Mr. X. But Mr. X has made trick on you. We as the organization, because we love our member yeah. and we respect the voters, we will take Mr. X to go and do a one-year diploma in public management. You are balancing. You are still keeping what the voter wants, but you are also equipping yeah. that person to can be able to go and participate well. That's why when we look at EFF leaders and MPs, they look smarter, Yana and fresh, outclassing those other ones mm. because majority of them, they've got some form of qualification one way or the other. Even if it's not a prerequisite, but they went to school. When Juju went into politics, mm. he only had age in woodwork and metric. He's got a postgraduate qualification at the moment. And mm. I think that's how leadership should structure their organizations. And failing which, um, I'm sure there's someone you can call at Fort Hay uh, who might be able to assist you. Uh, you know, that, that used to be our prime university. I well, wanted well, to well, study there. And, uh, African leader as well. It's sad. Uh, it's uh, sad what he said. I mean, Sobu Kwe Mugabe, Biko Nujoma, most of African leaders fought the hair was the brain supplier of leadership in Africa, especially the, the so-called frontline states, which is known as SADC today. Sure. But that is the challenge. First, it's misusing this. Another thing that also, I paid attention to, mm. and and I know members of the EFF are going to say I never praise them. I just praise Juju now. Have you noticed how political parties that are aligning themselves with socialism and we are for the people, we are for the poor, we wear overalls and mm. and the so-called uh, kitchen maid cleaning? Then they go and they make rallies or parties towards the election, and they will have after election parties. Mm. And all of them, it's not only the EFF and the ANC, most of them, most of but those two are the male culprits. And then they will have dinner with the president. And fresh, because he's a multimillionaire, he can buy a seat and sit on the same table with the president. Mm. They call it fundraising. So. But but then the EFF has brought something very nice in. They've got a jazz event. Oh, yes. Yes, and, and one of the best singers in the country is Mbui Sen in Hosey, the mm. former spokesperson. And remember, Ringo Majingo, one of our greatest musicians, is an MP member for the EFF. Now they're having a jazz session. The cheapest ticket is 2,000 rand. Mm. Now, if this political party, fundraising, there's nothing wrong with it. But they say they represent the poor of the poorest. Do they mean the majority of their members that I know they can't afford a ticket of 2,000 rand to go to a jazz show? Are you saying their members should not form part of that and enjoy jazz and see their leader uh, 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 singing? I, I, I've got a different view, and we saw it with Busasa. Mm. Uh, these political parties and dinners and rallies now jazz, it's, it's a money laundering process. It's, we saw it with Busasa giving ANC chickens and meat. Uh, 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 and people wanted to blame Menon Vola Mukonyani mm. to say he was receiving a meat, bright, packs. A bright packs, and I defended that him. I said, what will this woman do with bright packs that are over 300,000? Even if you've got the biggest family in the country, you can't eat meat with 300,000 every month. And that was donations to the party. So, sure. and, and this is where uh, we must be careful of how the capitalists or white capital that are running the country. Business runs the, the, the country fresh. This is how they do it. Mm. They fund political parties. The Oppenheimers divided themselves into 15. They identify 15 political parties from their grandchild to their daughter-in-law. Mm. Each one chooses a political party that they are going to fund. What, for what in return? For influencing politics, for controlling the government. Mm. And, and, and now somebody brought a, another dynamic, a, 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 a something to my attention. I'm running a business, I'm making wine. I'm John Rupert, I own wine farms. Mm. I support the, the EFF or the ANC, whichever, or even, even uh, uh, Action SA with, with uh, uh, an event to say, I'll sponsor wine into that event. And that's that. If I was stealing money, and I'm doing money laundering, what I will do in return, the party that is hosting a jazz event or an or a after election or pre-election party, they will buy my products. Mm. My wine will be so My money that I donated, it will come back to me by, by buying my products. That's money laundering. That's cleaning the money.
Because mm. this money that I've donated to this party to give 1.5 million, I will say throw in a party and then they buy goods worth 6 million. And that's where capitalism comes in mm. and that's where they make profit. But, but political parties must stop misleading people. You love the voters, you give them t-shirts and food parcels towards the elections. Mm. But when we have gala dinners to celebrate their vote, and their contribution, you do it exclusive. Sure. And, and for me, I think we are not in touch with reality as political leaders. Absolutely. Before we wrap it up, CIA uh, spying on South Africa? What's going on? What's going on? Is there, is there, okay, there was, there was a, a, a document, a CIA report, okay. that was leaked. Uh, 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 years back, uh, a friend named Tabo Makwapa, who's uh, one of the senior investigative journalists, got hold of that report mm. where the CIA was actually talking and telling how they are uh, spies, for lack of a better word, uh, uh, operatives is the official way mm. that are in the U.S. Embassy in Swani, were spying on one, the ruling party, to influencing our own intelligence the state security agency towards decision making, towards who to make business with and how. Mm. Now, when, when Mr. Makwakwa got hold of that report uh, on behalf of the independent online and, and the independent newspapers, he wanted to publish it. Sure. So the ruling party, the government, uh, which is state security agency, as well as the American uh, embassy or the CIA, they went to court to intercept that, to say they, they, mm -hmm. it's been years, I think it's about three, four years now, that the independent online or Mr. Makwakwa cannot publish. That, uh, that. So Dr. Iqbal Swaf, the owner of independent media, mm. went to appeal the decision in court. And now the court has ruled that that secret classified document of the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States can be made public. You know, fresh, I'm waiting so much to get lay my hands on that. But this mm. links to the history of the CIA, part of it is claiming to how they influence CODESA. Sure. And part of the CODESA minutes that I laid my hands on this past week, they form part of that CIA report. So they've been working on the ruling party. They've had meetings. I've seen a report where there's a complaint that the CIA, as recent as the last few months, they had meetings with President Ramaphosa, and Derko did not know about the meeting. Oh, wow. And he flew to Washington. He went to have a meeting with Biden in the White House, and, and, and Derko did not... And, in the embassy in the U.S. in Washington did not form part of that. Uh, we call it espionage. Mm. It's infiltration. Uh, uh, it's control of a state by another state. And it, it's very dangerous as well. It's very dangerous. And, and that's why America has a nerve today to produce a bill in their Senate, the, the lower house and the upper house, and they call it a bill to review Mm. bilateral relations between the ANC government. They don't say the government of the Republic of South Africa. You never enter into uh, 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 international relations mm. with the name of the political party aligned to it. Now they are calling that bill, it's called the bill of the strange relationship between the ANC of the Republic of South Africa and the United States of America. So, so, so it shows the infiltration where it comes from, their control. And why will the USA go? And why did we also as a nation, sign a bilateral agreement that says the ANC-led government. Now America is mm -hmm. crying foul that the ANC-led government of South Africa is, is, is becoming friendly with uh, their enemies, you know, China, Russia, Iran, and Palestine, and they are anti their friends, Israel, and so forth. But they, I, I, I think, you know what, if America cancels that bilateral agreement, it's good for us. Then we can sign a proper bilateral agreement mm. based on the Republic of South Africa and the United States of America, not with the ANC. What if the ANC loses power now? What if they are no longer in government? What if mm. the DA goes into coalition miraculously with, with EFF or MK, and they keep ANC out? What's going to happen to that bilateral relation? Mm. I, I don't think we should have entered into that kind of regime, but I think Americans are very silly. It's Paul Kagame, we can deal with them. <laughs> you see what they meant. <laughs> yeah, that's the only man that's not scared of the Americans. I mean, he, he was calling them out at the commemoration of uh, the, the Rwanda genocide uh, earlier this week. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and, 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 the late and, last week. And, and the fact that they didn't care, they just sat and watched. Look, fresh. I, I think it's the arrogance of the Americans, and they do it every year. This was 30 years commemoration of the Rwanda genocide, okay? Mm -hmm. And Kagame is simply saying, you cannot tell us mm -hmm. as Rwandese what to call that genocide. Sure. The American Secretary of State, which is their foreign secretary or foreign minister, uh, goes uh, and tweets 
that uh, the genocide in Rwanda, it was for all Rwandis, uh, 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 whether you are Tutsi, Hutu, Bantu, or what. It is okay, and, and, but I like what President Kagame is saying. Support us if you want. Criticize us if you want. But when it comes to our domestic affairs that hates and focuses on us as Rwandis, mm. please do not disturb us. Yeah, mind let, your let, let, mind your opinion, let us call it what we want to call it. True. Me and you, and look, uh, I fortunately have, have been there and I've been through you know, one or two processes of the Rwanda genocide commemoration. And, and call it whatever you want, but Rwandese prefer, or, or, or the Rwandan people prefer us to call it a genocide to cleanse the Tutsi people, the minority Tutsi. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't we want to call it what they want? And people argue with me. And they are not what it is. What it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, people are saying, yeah, but even the, the Hutus uh, 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 and, and Bantus mm -hmm. were killed. Yes, in every war situation, there will be casualties. Even perpetrators mm -hmm. of a war would be casualties at some stage. It was a well-planned, well-orchestrated genocide to wipe off the Tutsi people. It is what it is. And often the, those casualties that they say, but also, it was probably either self-defense or in a skirmish or exactly. in the mayhem that was happening. Le the bottom yeah. line is one group went after another. Exactly. And, and, that is what it is. and that's what it is. And let me tell you the beauty of South Africa on that one. Mm. You know, with pride, what we did, that South Africa doesn't know. That's why some of us are worried about our relations with Rwanda. You know what happened uh, after the genocide, after mm. I established the mission there? Mm. Two, we did two things for Rwanda and South Africa because we went on our first elections that day. Number one, South Africa paid for Cuban doctors mm. from Cuba, little amount supported by the late uh, President Fidel Castro. South Africa paid for those doctors to go and establish the health system mm. of what people see in Kigali today. To say, brothers, we were not there, we were mm. voting while well, you were killing each other. We want you to establish. The, the health system. Mm. That was 1996, 1997, and President Mbeki was the deputy president, and you know he was in the forefront of that. The year 2000, this is something beautiful we have done as a country to run. I established the, the embassy in Kigali. One of my mandates, the primary mandate, and mm. President Kagame posted about it today, was that South Africa gave hundreds of visas, study visas, to one day. Now, this is where the, the, the Americans are wrong. When we issued those visas, and I said with authority, when I signed those visas, over 500 of them, mm -hmm. some were saying, even put it specific, you know who are the benefactors of that? Children of the perpetrators of but the genocide. The genocide. Mm -hmm. Children of Houthi and political mm -hmm. leaders whose parents were either in jail, in exile, or killed. The perpetrators. The part of their reconciliation process was let us even do something good mm. for children of the perpetrators. They came and they studied in South Africa. Guess how? Mm. They paid what South Africans were paying. No special fees, no extra amount, and hundreds of Rwandese children mm. of Rwandese, not Hutus, not Tutsis, came to study in South Africa with our help, issuing them study permits and visas mm. to can come live and study here and went back home to rebuild their country. That's why this past week when President Mbeki and President Ramaphosa were in Rwanda, mm. uh, President Mbeki reminded the people their own we played without taking sides. Absolutely. And, and that's, why, that's what uh, 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 President Kagame with the American Birkin's uh, conduct. Um, yes, sir. But, but I think as a nation, it's 30 years of our democracy, it's 30 years of a set genocide remembrance in mm. Rwanda but we have done very well on diplomatic cycles. We must just you know, reinvent and, and fix our relations but Mr. Ramaphosa had a mm. three to four hour meeting with President Kagame to look at one of the agenda items was the reinventing and starting the diplomatic relations mm. but also the, the, the conditions and the challenges within the Eastern DRC. Amen brother. Uh, but, man, with said note, I don't know whether it is still said after 30 years, but, yeah, uh, never again. It should never happen again that mm. in, in this continent we have a country, we have, you know, brothers and sisters killing each other. Mm. Uh, a million people in 98 days. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's a big number. Uh, Rabi, we yes. are out of time. Thanks, my uh, brother. I think let's wrap it up. Uh, where do we find you on social media? Uh, Butang M at gmail.com and 082 and I am at Butang M on X and uh, what do you call that thing, IG? 
Yes, sir. And on Facebook. Absolutely. He's back again next week for another episode of Politrix with Botsam Mwilwa. Coming to you from AMP Studios, we're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out Pezulu Works for the cinematography, all of the imaging by artist The Floor Fraser, our guest, Botsam Mudimuame Mwilwa, creative producer Kuvesh Mohan, and email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a wow week in spite of yourselves.